Well, it's all around us and most of us never give it a second thought, but one local mom is cutting her family off from wireless. Only on CBS2, our Lisa Siegel shows us how the mother's health concerns prompted big changes. Ava Lawson of Beverlywood is seven years old. She and sister Autumn, six, are playing with a relic from a bygone era. A tape. Though few kids her age have ever encountered one of these, the Lawson kids know exactly what it does. It says words. In the Lawson household, cassette tapes are still in use, and so is this. A telephone wired to the wall. It's how big sister Amira, 22, chats with her friends. And they're like, well, how do you live? And I'm like, I live, you know, just don't have a cell phone. In this family, there are no cell phones, no iPads, no iPods, absolutely no wireless connections to the outside world. And you're just thinking, I want to live. Mom Nura Lawson says she started feeling sick in 2012, soon after the LA Department of Water and Power installed a wireless smart meter on her home. One just like this. There are 52,000 of these being tested right now in LA. The DWP says they're safe, but some people claim the radio waves they emit can trigger health problems. I began to feel dizzy at first migraines, heart palpitation. Amira also experienced trouble. My brain was running slower and I was like, <laughs> what's going on? There is a syndrome called electromagnetic hypersensitivity. Dr. Robin DeGurney is an oncologist in Long Beach I... and a clinical professor at UC Irvine. There are two kinds of radiation that we speak about. One is ionizing and one is non-ionizing. In ionizing radiation, clearly, there's a great risk of DNA damage, mutation, and cancer. This danger has not been proven with non-ionizing radiation, the type emitted by cell phones, smart meters, and Wi-Fi. But with our 21st century explosion of wireless, we're bathed in this type of radiation. Does it cause medical illnesses? Great question, difficult to answer. For the Lawson family, who consider themselves electromagnosensitive, the smart meter had to go. But once they got their old school analog meter back, we felt better health wise. But a year and a half later, a nurse says her symptoms came back. I began to have the migraines, I began to have the heart palpitations. It coincided with a change at work. I'm a teacher. Eighth grade English at Johnny Cochran Middle School. In March of 2014, to facilitate its iPad program, LAUSD decided to install Wi-Fi within my school site. With her health going downhill, Anura testified before the Board of Education. I'm a parent of six children. I want to be around to see them grow up. When I am in the Wi-Fi classroom, I don't feel good at all. There were a lot of people that were concerned about putting Wi-Fi in classrooms. Bill Piazza is the LAUSD's environmental assessment coordinator. It's his job to make sure classrooms are safe, where there are Wi-Fi access points. We use a very sophisticated piece of equipment. It measures radio frequency output. We looked very hard at the potential exposures in the classroom. No matter where we went, it's all low. Piazza showed us an emissions report from a Wi-Fi classroom. These are 30 kids streaming in a classroom, and these are the exposures that they're getting. <laughs> Look how low that is. Still, last September, the Board of Education agreed to turn off the Wi-Fi in Anura's classroom. Now, she is believed to be the first public school teacher in the U.S granted a health accommodation for electromagnetic hypersensitivity. And I think the district did a very good job in, in making a reasonable accommodation for her. A nurse accommodation applies to her classroom only to keep her children away from Wi-Fi exposure. Her four youngest are being educated at home. Instead of Google Earth, there are globes. Instead of a touch screen. They read paper books. There's internet in the house, but only through a hardwired connection. Plug-in walls, man, that's the best. Over the past three years, Anura says she's encountered plenty of doubters. Dr. Nagurney says that's too bad. People are of different sensitivities. Uh, we know that one person can get a bee sting and nothing happens. Another person goes into anaphylactic shock. It's the same bee sting, different reaction. His take on whether Wi-Fi emissions could cause illness? The likelihood is small, but the chance is not zero. I would like to see it thoroughly researched. Anura believes the newness of wireless makes it impossible to fully understand now how it might one day impact health. So she's keeping her kids away from it for as long as she can. Teaching doesn't have to involve a device. I think that 
our students, unfortunately, are the guinea pigs, and I don't think that's right. The LA Unified School District says it is continuing to study all safety data with respect to Wi-Fi. You can see the data for yourself and chime in with your own thoughts on CBSLA.com.